Chessophile Show. Chessophile Show. The Chessophile Show. I want to ask the questions of uh, fans, fellow chess players. Okay. So I'll start by Arvind Chidambaram's question. Uh, Canvas, this is for uh, uh, Karthikeyan as well as to Ankit. Can you suggest okay. a funny opening novelty? Novelty? Novelty. Yes. Oh, okay. Is there anything uh, that you find is very funny? It may not necessarily be novelty. a novelty, but he wants to know any funny opening novelties. <laughs> Okay, maybe I can go with A3 first move. First move A3. Yeah, so yeah. just think, you know, my point is just, uh, just think in this way. Let's say you are starting a game mm -hmm. and black has a pawn on A6, then who has that on H? Uh-huh. Uh, so that way, yeah. So I felt uh, A3 could be the novelty. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a novel way to approach. Yes. Uh, yes. I have myself mm -hmm. come across this A3. Uh, mm -hmm. I was playing in Reykjavik Open where uh, White played A3 to which Black played H6. And that the player who played H6 <laughs> is Richard Raffo. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> but H6 is much, much inferior as compared to A3 actually. Come on. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you must take a look at that game if you haven't. It's a okay. Very <laughs> no, only uh, only Raffo, Raffo can play such... Uh, such <laughs> yeah, he won yeah. that game. Against yeah. Hamid. Oh, against, okay. against okay. Sorry, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, Hamid mm -hmm. Tuvesi. Hamid Tuvesi. Okay. okay. I'm ready for Hamid Tuvesi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I'm okay. sure that's not the way it's pronounced. But okay. <laughs> oh yeah. I was there when it happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So enjoy the fun. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now <laughs> we will go to Ankit. So what do you think? Yeah. Oh, I was also going to suggest A3. Now. <laughs> yes. Taken away your. Sorry. Yeah. Taken away my. So, which line should I suggest to Arumin? Mm -hmm. I think I will suggest that one way. So, I think Niranjan may, may be having some idea. So, mm -hmm. before, uh, I think before uh, uh, this, uh, so like maybe 10, 10, 12 years back, Andhra Pradesh players used to play this line, if you remember Niranjan. G3, yes, E3, yes. knight A2, bishop G2, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so there, was a, there was a trend actually. I think, I'm not sure. What, uh, maybe they were learning from same coach or how was it? So, Mm -hmm. Even top players were playing actually this line. I remember mm -hmm. uh, uh, VAV Rajesh was playing this line very frequently and he was 2200 at that time. And he was still mm -hmm. playing this E3 and he was big beating. So I would say, <laughs> since it is out of the fashion now, I would suggest go for E3, G3, and ID2, Bishop G2. And bring that back to fashion. Yeah, bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, don't you know that E3 poison is already in fashion? Either poison is there, but I don't think G3 90 to yeah. Bishop G2 specific yeah. <laughs> setting is in the fact. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So I will I take that. that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Then we will go to the next question. This is by mm. Swams Mishra. Okay. First to Ankit. Who mm. is your favorite female chess player? <laughs> okay. I'll go with who you fan actually. Oh, yeah. I, okay. I, yeah, I, I have a very specific reason for that. There is a backstory concerned with Niranjan. Mm -hmm. So I was uh -huh. playing, uh, so Niranjan was playing in one of the opens in Malaysia in 2010, actually. I was yeah. also mm -hmm. there. And uh, uh, Fan was also staying in the same hot hotel as us, actually. So the tournament hall was same in the same hotel. And mm -hmm. what, what used to happen was once tournament, so the game used to finish or uh, Fan uh, was in the lobby or maybe having lunch or something like that. Uh, Niranjan used to approach her to ask about how to prepare or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I saw that she was very patient enough and to answer all the questions. <laughs> so I, I like, I admire such quality of strong players because mm -hmm. some players what they do is they just discard, you know, no, 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 I'm busy and things like that. And she was actually, if I'm not mistaken, she was already a women's world champion by that time. Yeah. Was, mm -hmm. If not women's world champion, but at least uh, very, at very top. I think so, it was 2010, I think. Yeah, 2010 actually. So I'm not exactly sure if she was the world champion, but she was at the top. That's for sure. And the but the the quality of humility mm -hmm. and how she you know, she was patient enough to answer answer Nirenjan's questions. I think it was at more than one point, right? During yes. the tournament. So and every time she was very she helped. Yeah, so, she was polite yeah. and uh, yeah. I think so she I think won the is, event. I mm -hmm. think so, but uh, yes, I think she won the event. But again, that. Uh, the quality of politeness was the I think I like how she you know she 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 just she just did not discard Niranjan that okay just email me or just like that okay mm -hmm. I have no time I'm tired and all like that 
many mm. her name she was very patient and she very politely answered all the queries of nirmal okay that was good okay let's come mm. back to karthikeyan mm. what about you okay i it's very tough for me to choose mm. between the top 3 players oh ho okay yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, I have Jared Polgar, who is from Ampiaka. Maybe I will go with uh, Ampiaka. Ampiaka. Because okay. she okay because uh, she made a comeback after uh, you know uh, getting married, getting yes. married, and uh, recently she won this tournament. So I I feel that was really inspiring. Then mm-hmm. the next question is to Karthikeyan again. Okay. you won against uh, valio pons in world cup mm-hmm. the second round after losing the first round in a world cup match yeah yeah so we all know how world cup works uh, like in mm-hmm. the first two games if if the score is uh, tied then you go for tie breaks but if you lose the first round you are forced to mm-hmm. win the second game yeah so ratan vel wants to know mm-hmm. what did you do before mm-hmm. the game uh, and what was happening in your mind what are the coping methods you mm-hmm. Uh, used you know to prepare yourself for the game and how did you conduct the game mm. yeah actually uh, uh, before the game i was quite upset that's normal but mm-hmm. uh, i i didn't carry that for my next game mm-hmm. you know uh, if uh, if you just uh, think of the previous games then uh, you won't ca- uh, consider it uh, in the next, in the uh, game which is happening now mm-hmm. so i was basically thinking this as my new game i mean uh, my first round game mm-hmm. and uh, i just wanted to play a good game that uh, second round okay i was not uh, bothered about the previous round results or uh, i mean any psychological experts i was not thinking any of that i just okay. wanted to play good good game uh, on the second round okay so basically uh, i if i i feel that if i play for win then uh, i might make some mistake okay because you know uh, you you have some pressure like we need to win we need to win something like that so mm-hmm. when you think something like okay let's just play a good game then uh, you will play the good moves automatically okay so basically i was thinking to play a good game that's the so that was in your mind yeah okay. and i was doing preparation uh, normally that's all i didn't like uh, do any kind of special preparation for that Okay. So after losing the first round, I just prepared normally for second round, and I won. Okay. Mm. So uh, you just took it as uh, just any other thing and uh, prepared for your next game. Yeah, yeah, that's all. I just forgot the first round and I played the second round. That's all. So how did you get this ability to forget uh, the past? I mean, it's a super power these days. <laughs> like you immediately <laughs> adjust to something which is. Uh, You mm-hmm. like you adjust to the new situation. So this has come by experience or by some deliberate uh, uh, activity. Okay, I I feel it's mainly be due to experience. That's all. I didn't do any special thing for this. Okay. Yeah. Now, next mm-hmm. question to Ankit. To If you had to pay a lot of money to a particular mm-hmm. opening as a way mm-hmm. to repay. For what that opening has given you, okay. what would that opening be? All right, it's a um, really good question. So, mm. does it does it need to be only one opening, or how is it? Yeah, let's say you want to pay one opening. Okay, one mm. opening. Uh, okay, it's a tough choice actually. Yeah, it's a tough choice. Just one opening, but I think mm. uh, if I have to say, then it would be Karo. Yeah, I knew that this would be the answer. <laughs> so what what happened? There is a nice backstory. So I used to play Sicilian Dragon and Accelerated Dragon and all sort of things, which mm-hmm. of course was contrary to my style, right? But mm-hmm. somehow I managed to reach twenty three hundred actually. But mm-hmm. then I realized that it is bringing me back. So what I did there was I think Niranjan must be remembering in two thousand. At ten or eleven, Lars Shandor published a Grandmaster Report on Caro Pan, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I did, I, I bought the book. and um, so of course i sat in front of the computer mm-hmm. so and then i entered all the moves actually whole repertoire i entered in uh, chess base mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so, and then it was my own preparation and then uh, once i entered then i did some preparation I, and i played on um, and i think that mm-hmm. was the breakthrough moment of, because of so it, it was co- it coincided with the the earlier incidents i mentioned right mm-hmm. so Uh, the that two two eight zero to two three five zero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. I started after two three five zero because I reached two three five zero. So I got some motivation back. Then I prepared Karokan and I think uh, 
from there to make me the grandmaster i think that played a very crucial role in very key okay mm-hmm. so karo khan becomes rich now thanks to all the money <laughs> ankit is going to give <laughs> okay uh, next question to uh, kartikeyan bmw mm-hmm. or mercedes if at all what bmw or mercedes if at all you decide to buy a car would mm-hmm. it be bmw or mercedes I don't know why this question you are asking this question to me. I, I will go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am not interested in buying cars, so this is. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, sense. Yeah, so maybe I will go with. Uh, okay, I know that. Uh, I don't know whether it's true or not, but I uh, I heard that uh, people who are uh, young they will buy BMW and people who are like uh, you know in the thirties or forty, uh, maybe forties or fifties they will buy Mercedes. Okay, so you are going so, with BMW. Okay. Yeah, I will go with BMW then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then the question is to. both of you now a chess mm-hmm. parent wants to know what is a method for chess growth like what usually happens in let's let's take your own careers as models mm-hmm. uh, what what did you do generally mm-hmm. like once mm-hmm. you start playing tournaments what is the general course in mm-hmm. which an improvement happens if i have to say in my case then uh, earlier it was the when i got my rating the the minimum threshold was 1800 so mm-hmm. If your rating performance is not eighteen hundred, you will not get the rating. Mm-hmm. So, and I think it was after playing for how much time? I think one and a half year or so. I got rating of two zero four nine or something. Mm-hmm. Again, it was my strength was not that. So if if we get into progression, right? So it took me around twelve years in total uh, to reach from uh, starting chess to becoming a grandmaster. Mm-hmm. So, so it was a combination of uh, mainly playing the tournaments because I think in earlier, as I said, there was not that much chess culture here, right? Mm-hmm. Although I was working with some coaches, definitely no doubt about it. But what we used to do, so one really good thing in my state which used to happen was every Sunday there used to be a tournament, local tournament in Ahmedabad. So what we used okay. to do, we used to travel like uh, from uh, in morning. I and my mother will go and uh, we'll participate in the tournament, and then mm-hmm. in the evening we'll come back. So every week up down. Mm-hmm. So every weekend you used to go, and uh, we used to play. Of course, earlier I used to play age group tournaments and state tournaments happened, and senior tournament happens. But I think that was the crucial role which played in mind the playing tournaments. Okay. So, because now what happens is i think almost everyone is coaches right so i, yeah. I also of course did not have some uh, grandmaster coaches and all i have some local deputed coaches who had experience of working with beginners mm-hmm. and some so i was and i was working mostly one coach at a time it was not like my uh, my financial condition did not allow me to have multiple coaches at the same time or even mm-hmm. bring some coaches to the tournaments which my colleagues used to do okay. but i think for me the key role in the initial phase was to play the more number of tournaments, tournaments. and then analyzing saw, yes so i think analyzing was there at some point but as a beginner um, that part uh, you need a you need a you need to work for longer period of time with a coach to do the analysis right mm-hmm. so what used to happen with a coach so my uncle uh, and all they used to they, they are actually living in ahmedabad so mm-hmm. what used to happen i used to go saturday many mm-hmm. times so then then i used to do coaching on saturday so i used to learn and then we used to stay at our uncle's and my grand uh, grandfather's place and then uh, sunday tournament then we used to come back so sometimes mm-hmm. we used to do that so but again Game analysis would not have been that much important role because number one, the time control was only thirty minutes, so one day tournament, right? So since I was beginner, I I I did not remember all the games when I at the end of the day. So I think um, mainly it was just working uh, outside of that, but mainly tournaments so because my first game, if I have to, I remember I got checkmated in five moves. So I knew mm-hmm. that you know bishop c four queen f three checkmate, right? Yeah. My uncle, so my uncle taught me chess, and he said okay. you are going for the tournament, don't fall into this trap. So I played knight f6 actually when my opponent played queen f3 bishop c4, but I accidentally touched the f6 knight actually. So, <laughs> so, but of course I was that was my first ever tournament game, so I did not know I can play knight d5 and give the knight and not get checked. <laughs> so, but I played knight g4 and he checkmated. But okay, there is a nice end to that story. Then that opponent of mine never. I I you know never drew drew again even drew I beat him ten fifteen times after that so my uh, record is hundred percent up so 
so that was of course a funny incident but to sum it up i think the crucial role which i played was tournament after tournament so especially from beginner to getting a respectable rating of maybe 1900 to 2000 mm. okay so that was uh, you know your way uh, the way you played and uh, mm. in the starting years let's ask kartikeyan what about you yeah. kartikeyan so uh, initially i actually i was in uh, remote village not mm-hmm. so much but okay uh, it's not proper chennai mm-hmm. so what we used to do uh, i joined the academy uh, during 2000 Maybe eight or seven, I guess. Mm-hmm. I joined uh, Bloom Chess Academy, mm-hmm. and uh, in that academy uh, there are many players. So mm-hmm. what I used to do is like uh, yeah, uh, more often I will be playing with my seniors. Mm-hmm. So you know uh, you will gain more experience by playing with uh, more experienced players. Mm-hmm. So and also I would be going to some weekend tournaments, uh, not uh, like. Uh, Yeah, every time, but okay. Whenever I get chance, I'll go to the tournament. Mm-hmm. But mainly, I'll be playing this federating tournaments, like uh, okay, normal federated tournaments. Those times there are uh, no tournaments like uh, below sixteen hundred or something. So if mm-hmm. it's federating, it will be like open for everyone, including GMs and including for eighteen hundred, seventeen hundred. So when I was uh, starting my career, it was I think seventeen hundred, if mm-hmm. I'm not wrong. That's mm-hmm. it. The starting rating was seventeen hundred, mm-hmm. and uh, my my initial rating was one thousand five four. Okay. Yeah. So what I would do is basically uh, play more with my senior players or experienced players, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, okay. play with my we uh, play with my group players as well in the academy. Okay. So well, basically, what I was doing is like uh, playing with my uh, playing with seri- uh, experienced players and playing in the tournaments as well, mm-hmm. and uh, then and there I'll be working alone as well. Okay, so what I could make out through both mm-hmm. your journeys is that um, one is the tournament practice, consistent yeah. tournament practice, and then uh, mm-hmm. some uh, guide or a coach to just yeah. help you mm-hmm. to direct you to a good possibility or good yeah. tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now mm-hmm. coming to uh, the last question, I would say mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. uh, you know just when I had already prepared the format, I got this okay. question from Akhilesh. Mm-hmm. Though this is not part of the chessophile show, this is a mm-hmm. this can be considered as a let's say a fan question. Mm-hmm. So how many Indians have won the Cannes Open? Oh, Cannes Open. Yeah. Cannes, I know recently. Abhijit uh, Gupta won. Gukesh, so. Gukesh won. Uh, so Gupta won last year. Did Gukesh win yeah. or not? Yeah, Gukesh won. I think this one. No, I know that. Uh, so there is a there is a. So I know Akshay Rajkore won and became grandmaster in 2013. Mm-hmm. I won in 2014 and I became a grandmaster. Mm-hmm. Then Abhijit Gupta won in 2019. 2020, I think Gukesh won if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I think I saw some yeah. article. I and think, I think so, well, uh, the I think point was to mention, you know, Akshay Rajkore winning and uh, you know Ankit Rajpura also. So there was mm-hmm. a, there is a, <laughs> a nice backstory to it. So Akshay Rajkore, I think, had one GM nom and two four five four rating, and they went mm-hmm. to this Europe trip, and they got mm-hmm. two GM noms and became grandmaster, something like that. Yes. And I was two four five five with one GM nom, so only one rating point difference. I played two tournaments and increased fifty uh, was two rating points and became grandmaster. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for both, I think uh, for Akshay also it was similar case if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, so that was the point. So he wanted to know whether you guys know about this. Yes, yes, no, no. <laughs> that, that, that was that was when I when I was playing back at that time. I knew that last year Akshay Akshay became uh, mm. uh, became like this. So of course I did not expect that I would repeat that feat, but uh, that was in the back of my mind. Mm. Okay. So with mm. that, uh, you know, you have taken all the questions that I had picked. Chessophile show. Chessophile show. Chessophile show. The Chessophile show. <laughs>